my counterpart, Michael Garrity, who was here, and now he's on the way to your hair. Um, <laughs> yeah, as well as, 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 well as statics instructor. Yeah. Do you have to stand in one place while you're teaching statics? <laughs> Uh, anyway, enough statics and dynamics jokes for the day. Yeah. And we, we have our two ISAs helping us here. We have Matt Jackson and Efren Perez. Woo! Yeah. Efren, of course, normally isn't here. He seldom is here in the daytime because he, 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 he subs in a, in a lot of the, in the school districts and they keep you pretty busy. But occasionally he gets a day to come and visit us. When, the, when it's not dark outside. <laughs> and I'd like to take this opportunity. I don't know how many new students we have. We have some new faces. Um, welcome to Mesa. Um, part of the, you know, th this is a monthly meeting that we have to kind of ensure that you, uh, people are up to date. A uh, month sometimes is a, quite, a, quite a gap between meetings, but at the same time, uh, you know, keep your keep your eyes and ears open. Uh, we do post things on our. We have a Mesa web. Uh, not a, well, we do have a Mesa web page that we seldom update. And see, like if we do put if we put something on our calendar, it'll show up on the actual on Mesa on the website. Um, but we also have our Facebook page, and we also have our club that emails out almost any activity that's going on whether it's a Mesa Club, Mesa Program, or whatever. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, the, I generally go over this every time if we have, you know, and with new students. And we also talk about a little bit when we do our, when we do our interviews, if you've made it in for an interview already. If not, you might be hearing this for the first time. Um, Mesa is a study area first, which is not surprising. And we do try to keep it quiet basically from about 8 to 12 and 2 to 5. Between 12 and 2, we have meetings and other things and, and, and whatnot. And uh, after 5, it's usually pretty quiet in here because there's almost nobody here. I, I don't know. We have a, a new we have a new version of students in the last year or so that do not stay late in the Mesa Center and study. They tend to go do something else if they have an evening class or gone after the evening class or whatever. But again, it's kind of a cyclical thing, not really, uh, um, it's hard to predict what will happen. The fishbowl is for workshops. When workshops are scheduled, there will be a sign on the door with a schedule of the workshops. You know, that, that'll, we'll probably be, we'll start them in the third week of the semester, give you a chance to get everything kind of ironed out and, and see how much, you know, if you want some additional support for your classes. Um, you can use the fishbowl to study and work in if there's no workshops on the schedule. But if there's workshops on the schedule, you can't say, oh, there's only two people in the workshop. I'm going to go sit the other end of the table. Because then if two or three people do that, next thing you know, somebody else comes, looks in there, and says, oh, I guess the workshop's full. I'm going to leave. I feel intimidated. Those people look really smart or something. I don't know. Whatever it might be. All right. So. Again, just try to follow that rule. It's up to the workshop facilitator to make sure that other students aren't coming in there. And again, when you have a workshop going, if there's nobody in there, if you don't have anybody showing up for a while at your workshop, that you know you, you've got to promote it. Those who become our, our facilitator for the semester. We have our vending machines run by the club. Seventy-five cents for the sodas, fifty cents for all the snacks. We, you know, we, we get people wandering in from campus. Do not advertise that. Don't go around telling all the other students and all your other classes, hey, you can get drinks for 75 cents over in Mesa. For one, they could probably get kind of crowded going in and out a lot. But at the same time, um, we just don't want to advertise it because we don't want it. That, that's a, it's work for for our club to keep the things stocked and everything like that. Instead, send them over to the kiosk. We're happy to take them. You can send them over to the kiosk and they'll charge you a buck and a half for the same soda. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's entrepreneurship. If you have your own little store, you can send them. Okay. So again, just keep that in mind. Um, the club 
the little bit of money the club gets, you can imagine those prizes, they don't extract a lot of money out of everyone, but the little bit of money they get, they use to support some of the activities the club does, and even the program does at times. It makes it possible for club members to participate in activities that the program is really hosting or putting on. They provide, a, you know, when we get to our banquet at the end of the year, they provide help with our banquet and those sorts of things. and. You know, a, a, a lot of other things as well. The refrigerator's in there. Is, is, it's in there for, your, for you to use, store your lunch in or whatever. Just we ask that you keep it clean. It's not Matt or Efren's job to keep it clean, although Matt, will, Matt and Efren will toss stuff out. Generally, things get tossed on Fridays. So as I always tell, again, this is talking maybe some of the new people. If you're bringing in a family heirloom, you know, a Roy Rogers lunch pail or something that you've had since you were two years old, don't leave it in there on Friday. Not that we probably would throw it out, but it'll get set out, okay? Food will get tossed. If it's, you know, if it's an in and out bag on Friday afternoon, don't expect it to be there Monday, and you probably don't want it to be there Monday either. Yeah, Roy Rogers. Who's Roy Rogers? Yeah, I know. I, mean, I went back a little too far for you guys. Yeah. Everybody said, Roy Rogers, who's so bad? Is he related to Aaron Rogers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway. Yeah, I, I should have used like an old bat, but Batman, you can have new stuff that's Batman or old stuff that's Batman. That's a Bruno Mars left though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you have George Reeves Superman, Stuff, then, then you're then you're good. Not Christopher Reed, but George Reed. Yeah. Okay, back to something more important. Here. Oh, but anyway, so again, try to keep the fridge clean. The only thing we ask, and there's I think there's a sign on the door. Do not put a soda in the freezer because you know you brought it in. Oh, it's a little warm. I'm going to cool it off, and then I'm going to drink it a little while. Because you know what happens is you forget, you get busy, you go to class, you come back, and what happens? We know what happens, right? Mm -hmm. The worst thing that the worst thing you can do, and this actually happened once. The only reason I bring it up, some of those are a good idea to stick it up in the ice. Oh, uh oh. Yeah. So in other words, it ruined all the ice and it kind of ran and went down. All the way. But anyway, so we, we had uh, that was a bigger ice. mess. And that was unfortunately before we had Matt, we had to clean it up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had somebody. I think everyone had to clean that one up. Then you, you were here in the evening. That day. <laughs> Um, what else we have? Uh, again, just clean up after yourself. Don't leave, you know, like, you know, you're not even eating. I can't even pick on you. I was going to say, don't leave your plate like Bailey. Yeah, yeah see, Bailey left the chip back there. You know, that's awesome. <laughs> and a little bit of, as I, I put in the thing, a little bit of public shaming is always well taken, okay? <laughs> Yeah, right. I mean, Bailey gets it all the time, right, from me. And, and Bailey gives it back, though. I, I, get, I get it back. And, right? And we're, 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 yeah. All right. And in case somebody's here kind of finding out about Mesa and you haven't applied yet, the application is online. You go to either Mesa or you go to Mesa. There's a couple ways to get there, but the easiest probably to describe, if you go to Student Services and go all the way to the very bottom of the page, you'll see the Mesa site link and on that site there's a little button that says apply now and that will open up you submit it it'll send an email to hillary and me saying that you've applied and uh, it should also inform you that you need to stop by for an interview okay so um hopefully it's doing that still it is if it doesn't do it let me know okay regular business and all this kind of stuff um as some of you are aware, we just completed Winter Trip 2018. Uh, we have some great projects ongoing that are going. Some of them are kind of ongoing. I don't know. Where'd Joe go? Well, Joe said he wants to figure his stuff out better. But um, again, it was, there, it was a, a, a good opportunity. It will come up again next January. Next January may be our last one. It's the end of the current grant that's funding that program. It's five years, and it, you know, like I said, it, it, it'll be, it actually ends exactly one year from today. So it, we barely make it through the winternship, and then that grant is over. 
Now it'll probably be extended a little bit to finish spending a few dollars here and there, but it you know, certainly won't go another whole year and fund another winter program. But we're going to look for opportunities to keep that program going with Cal State San Bernardino. We've already talked to them. We'll come up with a great name. We're going to call it Crest 2. How about that? <laughs> Actually, there's a fancier name, but uh, I, I don't even know what the title is. Okay. So again, if you if you hear what some of the kids have done, and you're interested next year, keep it in mind. Those of you who participated, the the, the checks are in the mail, so to speak, but they're being mailed to me. Uh -huh. And just as a matter of an announcement, I I need to see your list of uh, internship appli application site locations or whatever, and a finished poster prior to you getting your check. And everybody has to have their poster done. So you need to tell the other groups to get their posters done, too. <coughs> That's what we started last year, and it seemed to work better. You got a lot of encouragement from the other team. Because yeah. <laughs> they don't have the checks yet, so I really don't have it. They're being processed, so who knows how long that'll take. But again, great job for those of you who part participated. Um, and uh, hopefully you got something positive out of it. At least. Um, kind of a big announcement, Eston scholarship applications are, that we're advertising, as you can see on the door, for the next round of our Eston scholarship opportunities. Okay, it is on the, there is an application you can download and print on the math science homepage or something near it. You can find out about it. Um, it's a, uh, and it's again you can read the details but it's uh, just so that some people don't think it's five or six hundred dollars it's like Joe did last year no <laughs> it's five thousand if you are one if you are in not your last year before you transfer but two years before you transfer six thousand if you're your last year here as you're transferring again this would be for next for next academic year the deadline is going to be pretty rigid you know, we're not going to allow things to come in late, um, and there's, there's going to be a, re I mean, it's not up to me who gets the scholarships. There's a committee that will review the application. Your application must be complete, you know, and all the, everything there. If you leave something out, if it's a letter of recommendation or whatever, you, you know, you, you got to make sure we have it, okay? You turn your applications in at the math science office as well. But if you want me to review your application to see if it's complete, you can certainly sh show it to me. But don't bring it to me 30 minutes before it's due and say, how's this look, you know, right? And so that's, that's not going to help, okay? I'll say it looks really good. Turn it in. <laughs> and hope for the best. Anyway, so that's uh, um, going to be... Uh, that, that is an ongoing program for four more years. We're barely started the second year of that scholarship program now. Okay, so uh, again, keep that uh, in mind. It's not, you do not have to be a Mesa student, but you have to qualify for financial aid. Okay, and, but there's no other, I mean, you have to be a STEM major. You have to qualify for a Pell Grant. Even if it's only a little partial Pell Grant, you can still qualify for this. You do have to be a full-time student, etc. I'm not going to try to quote exactly what the qualifications are or requirements or eligibility. They're on the poster, but also on the application. If you have questions, come and ask me. You can ask Hillary, okay, and, and we can make sure uh, it is understandable. Another group of scholarships, the COD, local scholarships, are that process is now open. I don't know how long it's been open already, but I did get an email just, I think, yesterday from Stacy saying that that, that, that is, is open. It will be closing on March 3rd, as it says on the agenda. Second. They do. Second? second? Yeah, oh. second. Right. So she put that data to screw, our, up, screw up all of our students' applications, because we always put things off till the last minute, right? now. Okay, so again, and, and it's important, don't put them off to the last minute, get them done, get them out of the way. Okay, so it's actually March 2nd, which is a, March 3rd is a Saturday, isn't it? Yep. So that probably make it harder to turn them in. 
There's workshops. That's one thing. One reason we put it on there. There's workshops ongoing. Uh, they're posted over here on the wall somewhere. Okay. Hillary made a little flyer. Scholarship workshops or something. That scholarship works. Those scholarship workshops are for the COD scholarship, not for not for the STEM, but if. And you might find something beneficial to include in your scholarship application if you go, even if you're doing the ESTIM. Now, likely, if you qualify for the ESTIM, and I'm not saying don't apply for one and not the other, you may not qualify for all the scholarships you get. There is a limit of how much you can get in scholarship funds determined by the scholarship office and stuff in terms of support and all that. <coughs> Another opportunity that's, I'm going to go ahead, I'm advertising, so putting them out now. There's application, nice bright orange application forms over on the desk. is the Crest Summer Opportunity to work over at Cal State San Bernardino for the, uh, for approximately five weeks. Did you guys, you guys did five weeks this yeah. last year, right? it was five weeks. Yeah, we have a few folks who did that last year. Who do we have here? We have other than Brian, and is that it? Okay, well, we have a couple of folks who, so if you have questions about what it's like, you can talk to them. The application is pretty simple. It's not a big, long, drawn-out application, but you have to be willing to commit about six weeks over the summer. It's, it's kind of a stretched-out version of the wind internship, right? You work a little bit harder, a little bit longer hours. You work with other folks over at Cal State San Bernardino. I kind of hang out a little bit, just to make sure you guys aren't too lonely, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, um, you st but in this case, you stay in the dorms at San Bernardino, and you get a food allowance and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's more of a, a little more of a four-year experience, you know, like if you were out of four-year school, you, you, know, you stay there. The dorms are decent, right, guys? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you don't have to, I mean, a lot of, uh, I think almost, well, not everybody this year, but generally we have a pretty good group drives back over, you know, to our neck of the woods on weekends. I do not stay in the dorms, as it's been for you. I drive back and forth. No, that's it, yeah. And Dr. Pellenbarg participated, has participated the last couple of years, and it's likely he might be participating again because he still has a project he's working on. Okay. Um, so again, those applications, I, I don't. I put a deadline on there. I think of April fourth. It's a Friday after spring break, not the Friday, obviously during spring break. Now you can come back from spring break and realize, oh crap, I haven't done that one yet, but I really want to try. Okay. We can we can accept six or seven students. Six for sure. I could probably talk them into a seven. And that's real nicely, maybe. I don't know. No guarantee. All right. Um, coming up, we have an event, and it probably affects several of you. Is the scholarship award ceremony and meeting they have at, in the um, in the gymnasium with the donors from the foundation. You're supposed to go and meet with you. Know, you have a scholarship has a particular name on it. Uh, you're supposed to go meet with those folks and, you know, thank them and tell them a little bit about yourself. It, and as sitting, as, as the Academic Center President, I go to the, the foundation board meetings and it's pretty amazing, these people, in terms of the effect that that has on them. You might think, oh, they're just going to, they just want somebody to say thank you. They really are impressed when they get a chance to hear your story and learn a little bit more about you and, and everything. And, and that you even took the time to come over to the activity. It's going to be on February 28th from 4 to 6. Okay? So, again, on that day, dress nicely or carry a nice shirt in a bag or something, <laughs> whatever is necessary. And, 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 again, attend that activity if you are invited. You know, you have to be on some scholarship to, to actually go, although you could probably just go hang out for the refreshments and stuff if you wanted to. <laughs> you might ask, why do I go? And I'm not quite sure. No, I, I go for um, this scholarship. We have a, a scholarship in Celeste Honor. And I go because her family has moved away. And so I basically go and kind of represent 
her family at this activity. It's hard to believe it's been almost eight years. Right? Yeah, 2000. Yeah, almost nine years. So it's hard to think about that one. Uh, upcoming university visits. Uh, there's a sign up going on right now. I don't know if this affects anybody here, but University of Redlands. Uh, I think they're only taking like 25 and it's first come first served to sign up. It's on a, it's on Friday the 23rd, I believe, which I know makes it almost impossible for most of our students because we have Friday classes like most of the other places do not. Um, and so if, if you want to go on that, you need to get signed up. One that might create more interest. Again, it's another Friday. I'm sure it'll be on a Friday. They're planning one to UC Irvine. That one will be occurring. I have a feeling it'll probably occur when they have the, well, I don't know, that's on a Saturday, so it probably won't occur with that one, but it, it, it's going to occur sometime in March. They haven't started a sign-up sheet or anything like that, but it might be, good, you know, if you're thinking of go, going on that field trip, it'd be a good idea to stop by the transfer center, talk to them, ask them about the field trips coming up, and. Ask her, maybe you can talk them into sending you a little email notification when, when you can actually sign up or something like that. Okay? The, um, so, that, again, the activity that's coming up. Um, another thing that's going to be happening that's new this year, I wish Harry was able to make it. He could maybe tell us a little bit more about this because he's certainly more familiar. UCR is going to be offering a couple math courses at their campus here during the summer, okay? And before you get too excited, imagine. They are upper division classes, meaning you probably have to have at least completed multivariable calculus on either one of these, and maybe all in one. If you've done the linear algebra, it would be good because it's the one class is an upper division linear algebra class. The other one is a class in set theory. Okay, so again, up, upper level classes, really targeting almost entirely math majors, uh, but it might be, uh, you know, it'd be an opportunity to pick, if you're thinking of going to UCR and you're not quite ready to transfer, but maybe you have completed a multivariable calculus by the, you know, this year, it might be something you might want to think about. I don't know what they're going to do in terms of tuition and stuff. I don't know if they charge their full tuition or if it's a reduced mm -hmm. tuition for, for College of the Desert students. I know Cal State San Bernardino has a reduced tuition program, uh, but, uh, but again, I don't know what UCR is going to do. They're trying to rekindle, I don't know what the right word for it, interest in this UCR campus. It wasn't very many years ago they were trying to, they were trying to sell their facility to Cal State San Bernardino. They wanted to kind of walk away, but they haven't been able to walk away. Um, there are, as some of you know, we went to a couple lectures out there during January. There are lectures going on out there. They quite a few evening events and stuff, but there's really no programs offered out there. So math is, the math department over there, they say they're doing this to reach out to try to get more math majors at UCR from here, but. Again, they're offering a couple courses that you won't be able to take unless you're ready to transfer to UCR or somewhere else already. So I, I'm, I'm not sure. That's why I, I wish like uh, Jorge was here at the meeting. He usually makes it, but he's at, teaching at EDC till about 12:30. So it makes it kind of tough, I believe. So um, again, kind of keep that in mind. But like I said, the prerequisites are pretty tough on it. Uh, and if you're not a math major. You might still really enjoy the classes. I, 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 again, you might want to do the set theory class. I would think probably out of the two linear algebra, if you're like going into physics or computer science or something, the, the linear algebra class would probably be more directly applicable. Although, again, there's an applicability in set theory too in some areas of physics, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, last, certainly not least, our transfer recognition and awards banquet is going to be on May 19th. We've already reserved the room. Now that's a Saturday again. There's a couple of reasons why we pick Saturday. One thing is we don't want to do, have to wait for the board meeting to end to get into the room. And Saturday seems to just be more relaxed. I know it means you have to come back, 
But it makes it easier for people, you know, if you're, you know, your families are invited, especially if you're transferring and all this kind of stuff, or getting any kind of award or anything, we'll announce, at least recap all the students who are receiving summer internships, who are receiving scholarships, um, and those sorts of things. You'll probably already know before that if you were awarded an STEM scholarship for next year, but we will, again, announce that at that point and ask any of those recipients to attend. And, and such. So that, what's that? Yeah, oh yeah, well, the, the club will announce the results of their officer election for next year and all kinds of neat stuff like that. And the food's usually pretty good. Um, so there's a couple things that we ask, basically. One is as you, if you are transferring, as you start getting that information, we'd like you to start putting it on the board over there. We, we'll eventually get the papers off the board. I think we'll have you just write them right on the board so they're big enough for everybody to see. I ask that you put down all the institutions you're accepted at, then once you pick one, maybe circle it so we can, you know, use that specifically. Um, and, uh, and, and again, don't come the day before the bank and say, oh yeah, I didn't know we had to let you know, we, you know, I'm not going to know, basically. I know a lot of you when you get accepted because you come in, you're happy, you come in and tell me and stuff but not everybody comes in and, and shares with us in fact the next fall will roll around and maybe Bailey won't be here and Bailey will say oh I was supposed to let you know yeah, yeah see I, that's why Bailey's here so I can pick on him again. <laughs> yeah, <we're>, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but no again we do not automatically find out if you're transferring or something like that we don't get notification or anything we need to get that information from you and like I said it's really good for us when we promote Mesa to show that list of schools that you're accepted in. Because we have usually some pretty impressive lists of schools. Okay, now sometimes you only have, sometimes students know where they go and they want to go and they only apply to two, maybe three. Okay, I know the application process has long since passed. Okay, and some of you may be starting to hear pretty soon. <coughs> I would assume, you know, if anybody had a tag agreement with UCR, they probably already heard from them, didn't they? Yeah. Anybody have a tag agreement with UCR? Yeah, they sent that agreement. Yeah. Well, right. oh, okay. So, you know, people who already have kind of things set up and stuff are already knowing, uh, notifying. There will be an activity at Cal State San Bernardino. I was going to look up the date. For some reason, I think it's March 10th, which is a Saturday. If you are transferring to Cal State San Bernardino, and you're on the STEM scholarship grant right now, that will carry over to Cal State San Bernardino and actually go up to as much as 8000 per year. If you are going to transfer to Cal State San Bernardino and you're currently not an STEM scholar, there's still a, an opportunity, if they're not all given out to students who are transferring there that are already on scholarship, which pretty safe bet this year they won't be taken up because two of the schools didn't even get anybody selected for this first year of the grant. March 10th. What's that? March 10th. March 10th? It is March 10th. You already got it? Okay. As you, they, so there will be like a kickoff event. Um, you can ride over with me. I will go to that. Uh, talk, and then you'll get a tour. You'll get to meet with, you know, like there's faculty there from all the different areas. And again, in that, at that point, you're still maybe making that decision about where you want to attend. Obviously, it's too late to apply to Cal State San Bernardino if you did not, but if you did apply, if it's one of your possibilities, you might want to keep that one in mind, okay? That, that particular day. It is a Saturday, so we've got plenty of time. You know, we can take a nice drive over, and, and I think they provide lunch. Light refreshments. Light refreshments is all it says, is it? Okay, light refreshments. <laughs> a light refreshing lunch. I don't know. And then we'll have... Pizza on the way home? No, we don't have pizza. We'll have something other than pizza on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, so keep that one in mind as well. All right, and the other part is the, and I don't know, Brian might want to talk about this too, and, and, and he will kind of become, the club kind of becomes in charge of the banquet in terms of picking a theme and what they're going to do for decorations because I have to tell you now that most of the decorations will have to be provided by the funds that are in the club account as opposed to a Mesa account. I have a hard time getting anything like that approved anymore. Okay? 
But again, so decoration, you might want you to pick the food you might want. I might ask you to, if you pick the food, you're going to get estimates of what it's going to cost and all this sort of thing. We have reserved the Craven Center, so unless we get bumped by somebody, we should be in the Craven Center. The Hill will be officially closed by then, if it's not already officially closed. So, um, so again, that's uh, we, we try to make that a big event. Last year it was great. We try to, you know, and, and again, I ask you, if you are transferring, please try to make it so we can recognize you. It also looks good for us to show, hey, look at this group of transfers. Look at these group of STEM scholars and so forth. All right. Anybody have any questions at this point? Okay, well, I'm going to turn it over to club reports. Uh, and like I said, even though Brian's the only one listed there, our other club folks can, can report out to if they want. All right, so for the banquet, we're actually having a committee, and the sign-up sheet is next to the transferring sheet as well. So anyone wants to help set up, Please sign up so we can send out an email and get some dates going to when we're going to meet up. Anyone who is in the committee is going to help pick the theme and everything like that. So if you want to, you know, choose a theme or have any ideas or you're good at setting up um, parties or stuff like that, please sign up, you know, be part of it. It's pretty fun setting up and picking out all the cool designs and stuff that we set up for the banquets. Um, second thing is uh, we do need an ICC rep for this semester. So what they do is they go to the ICC meetings, which are held twice a month, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And you pretty much just report out what's going on with Mesa and what we're doing in our club. So if anyone is interested in that, you will be a um, ICC officer. So please let me know if anyone is interested in um, taking this position on. Yeah, what, can I interrupt for yeah. a second? Doing those kinds of activities, being an officer, and not only just in Mesa, but also you know somebody who gets involved in this, it looks great on college applications and scholarship applications, don't forget that. Because you are giving, you are giving time to the college or to your fellow student and everything like that to, to, to serve in those roles, so it's important. To, and, and if you do it, make sure you get it in your application somewhere. <laughs> yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a good thing to have in your resume and applications. And call yourself a mentor. Yeah. M-E-N-T-O-R. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a new catch word, yeah. White, white words. Uh, no, the last thing is, if you're new or are not receiving our emails, we've already sent one out for this meeting. If you're not receiving it, please sign up over there so I can get everyone's email. And also, make sure you add Mesa Club at um, college.desert.edu on your contacts, so that way it doesn't go into spam or... We make sure everyone's getting the emails, and that's pretty much about it. I don't know. Hi, I'm the president of the biology club and the chemistry club here at College of the Desert. Um, so uh, we we haven't had like a, we haven't chosen our specific days for our emailing list. If you want to be added, please put your name up there. We do like trips. We do volunteering opportunities. Also, um, as they were mentioning, we're all transferring, all the, the officers for the club and bio club. So if you're going to stay for the next year, it looks really, really good to put that on your application. So if anyone's interested, let me know. Show up to the meetings and stuff. Can I speak for a computer center? Nope. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm Connor from the Computer Science Club. We're currently doing some restructuring in it. Um, we're not sure what room we're going to have. <laughs> but uh, meetings are likely going to be from 12.30 to 1.30 or 2 on Thursdays. Um, we have a sign-up list right here, so if you're interested and you're not already in it, although most people who are in computer science are in it, uh, just put your name and your email address. We're going to be, this semester we're going to be working on some app, part, or app de development, and that's primarily going to be in Java. So if you're interested in working on that, maybe um, download Android Studio and consider looking to like an intro to Java, but we'll probably work on that in the uh, club meetings. And then on Saturdays, we're going to try to have some competitions. We did this a few times last semester, but we're gonna try to have them relatively frequently this semester, where we, last time we came into Mesa, so hopefully that's available as well on Saturdays. Um, and we did, there's a website called Caddis, where they have programming competitions that are open to 
individuals as well as institutions all around the country and the world. And the competition will start at nine and there will be a set of problems and you can work as a group or alone and try to solve the problems and submit your answers. So we're gonna be doing that as well as uh, code fight comp tournaments. If ever, most people probably know about code fights are in CS Club, but it's a it's a format where you can you and one other person get the same prompt, and you have to write code to solve it or find the error in the code already written, and then you go head to head against them and try to do it fastest. So we'll be doing tournaments for that as well, and that's about it. So if you're interested. Put your name and your email address on the CS sign-up sheet, please. Okay. All right, so my name's Bailey. I'm president of Astronomy Club. And we have a lot of cool stuff going on, and we want you to join. Uh, so, what are we doing in Astronomy Club this semester? Uh, actually, what did we do last semester? So, I don't know if you guys were here last year. We did... And a, a, a password. Uh, where's my one, two, three, four, five? No, I'm just not one. I'm glad you made a complicated. No wonder Bailey couldn't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know if you guys were here uh, last year. We had a uh, star party, and it's kind of the first time the college has ever done anything like that. And so we broke out a uh, what's it? A three, yeah, three meter. I'm sorry, uh, one meter. Uh, no, not the one meter. Uh, Seventeen inch. Seventeen inch. And uh, it's, you'll see a picture of it. It's, uh, it was big, it was like six feet tall, and we cleared out all the tennis courts. We had a uh, telescope on every uh, any, every tennis court and laid it out loud with uh, glow sticks and culinary, uh, you know, brought food over. It was really, it was a big thing. We had like 250 people. And uh, yeah, so we had everyone filter through, look through a telescope. We talked about what they were looking at, and it lasted a few hours, and there was food. It was, uh, it was really cool. First time we've ever done anything like that at this, uh, at this school. And then we did a couple other smaller star parties, and we did uh, uh, an eclipse viewing. If you guys remember the eclipse in August, we set up, we had the filters up, so that way you actually could see the you know, smooth pass in front of the sun. Not a total, you know, total eclipse, but you know, most of it. And um, yeah, so we pretty much just go out, take photos, uh, set up telescopes that everyone, everyone can look at and see what, uh, what you're looking at. And uh, I have some photos prepared for you. So you can kind of see what we do. So this was the uh, the eclipse setup. So you can see we have the telescope and the big one right here, and they all have filters on. And uh, yeah, so we're very big on uh, STEM and community outreach. It looks great on a uh, application. Uh, we, most of our events are open to the public, so we try to get as many people to come as we can and expose them to stuff that they wouldn't be seeing ordinarily. This okay, I'll come back to that. But just that's that's a major construction. Uh, that was the Eclipse, and again, we do lectures and outreach. Again, we're just trying to expose everybody to things that's, that's going on above you that you wouldn't really know about otherwise. So it doesn't matter, a lot of questions we get are, do I have to be an astronomy major? Or um, do I have to understand astronomy? Or what if I don't understand what's going on? Do I have to take a class? No, you don't need any experience. In fact, we need people from social media, ICC reps, stuff like that. So you don't have to have any experience. I myself am a mechanical engineer major, so I, you know, I don't know all of the, uh, all of the in and out. But again, it's mainly just about getting out there. And so some of the photos that we have from our, you know, our rock star resident photographer, this is, these are all original photos that we took. Uh, such as that, or long exposures. By the way, sorry. Or this was the eclipse, so you can actually see the moon come in front of the sun during transit from that setup we had earlier. Uh, shooting stars, more long exposures, and comets. And so this was actually uh, yesterday morning. There was a total lunar eclipse. And so this is kind of a time lapse of the moon setting coming out of the penumbra. So that was this morning, that was yesterday morning at 5 a.m. at the thermal campus. Or, yeah. Was it four? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so just like the eclipse, uh, this was, uh, I'm sorry, the solar eclipse, this was the uh, lunar eclipse yesterday morning, so you can actually see uh, the Earth enter in the, the, um, the shadow, or cast the shadow on the moon, called the umbra. So that was, uh, yes, yeah, so that was yesterday, and so those are just a few, uh, few of the photos of the events we've done, just pretty much just a year, so we do, we do keep busy. 
what you saw was the uh, the construction of the dome. So I don't know if you guys heard, uh, an old rich guy donated a million dollars to build a meter, you know, three feet long or a large mirror, which is like a state of the art, uh, kind of like a small observatory telescope. And the only places that have these kinds of telescopes are like Ivy League schools and like, you know, NSF research, research facilities. Besides like the big ones that are like their own observatory, most people don't have these, like even NASA is competing with some of their institutions with the telescope size that we have. So what you saw was that dome being under construction. Construction has finished, so we officially do have our own small observatory, and that'll be opening up in March. And so if you would like to participate in the first light and man a telescope and point things out to people, again, it's, you don't need any experience, we run through it, uh, we'd love to have you guys. And there's a sign-up sheet right there for Astronomy Club, and there's even a QR code if you just want to go to our Facebook page and message us. So we hope to see you there. So the first light event's on the 23rd? Is that no, still? it's on uh, Friday, Friday, March 9th. Yeah. No. It's what? Friday, March 9th. March 9th. March 9th. March 9th. Yeah. Yeah. Thermal Campus, 6, six o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And it's a, this time it's advertised as a true public event. Anybody can go. They did one when they first opened up the 17 inch, but they tried to make it more of a little private thing. And this time they're trying to make it more public. <laughs> I don't know how many people will be there, but hopefully there will be some. Anywhere from 300 to 300,000. Yeah, they're here. Yeah. Jorge. Jorge, made it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you want to see if you can Jorge, can you, can you say a word or two I, I mean, I, about the UCR math classes that are going to be offered? I mean, I know it's, I told them it's the upper division linear algebra and set theory class. What, I mean, is there more that you could share with them? So they have to be through multivariable calculus. Maybe linear algebra. No, they don't really need. It. So it's still it's still on the plans. So for well, sure. they sent it out. To, is, is they sent it out today to the transfer center here. Oh, okay. So it sounds like it's almost done deal. All right. So so what happens is if you're a math a mathematician or a computer scientist or engineer physicist, you usually need linear algebra at least at UCR to move on, right? So linear algebra is like the door to any of the higher classes. So what UCR is doing in an effort to kind of bring more students in is they're trying to offer in the summer um, linear algebra and set theory here at the campus in UC Riverside, right? So this is really would only apply for anyone who's ready to transfer really close, right? So you need at least Math 1B done by that, right? So the idea is to offer it here so that when you transfer, you have that already. Because otherwise, you fall behind, right? Like if you don't have linear algebra and you transfer as a math major, then you have to wait until you have linear algebra to take set theory, to then take topology, to then take real analysis, which puts you behind a whole year, right? So that's the idea behind this. So they're trying to offer set theory and linear algebra. But uh, and one of us will be teaching it. Me, Dr. Lee, or uh, Dr. Yeah, and then Donna Blanton, I think. But one of those would be the instructor. But you will get UCR credit. Right? So it's literally a UCR class. Do you have to be registered in UCR to apply to these? Or That's a good question. Is it offered as an extension course, I think? Is I don't know. They, they probably work with us. I, I have no details on that. But they probably will work with us. Cause, yeah, because that's the question. Yeah, we'll see. And then I don't know how much that would cost because it's a river use river side class, right? So it'd probably be more expensive. But maybe they can get some sort of financial aid or something. I, I don't know anything about that. That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. And for those of you who don't know, Jorge, Jorge Perez, and I, I promise him I would never mention again that he started here at COD in the Mesa program. So I'm not going to mention that ever again. <laughs> no, and, and, and now he's a math faculty here. Almost has tenure. Almost. Doing a doing a bang up job. Everybody's happy, although they keep him out at EVC most of the time. So you don't see him as much in the Mesa Center as you probably will if if he's back on this campus. But, uh, right. So if you're out at EVC, he's the he's the go to guy out there if you want to find anything about math. I don't know. Nobody else is out there even Bart. full. Bart. Bart. Yeah, he's there full time. Too. Yeah, I guess that's true. Bart's out there. Okay, so um, th those would be your questions. Anybody have anything else for the good of the order, as they say? Or as we say, one last thing? One last thing.
Does anybody have one last thing? I, I can. I want to add something. Oh, Gloria has one last thing. So we mentioned this last semester, but we have that NASA space grant program going on. It's it's going to be run a little different this year. We have that Physics 31 class, which essentially is the beginning of that NASA project. Okay, so if anyone's interested, for those of you who don't know, I'm talking about the NASA project involves working with Arduinos, right? And we will teach you how to work with Arduino. So you don't have to have knowledge in computer science, right? Uh, so the idea is you make a project, and uh, if we get the grant, we'll take you guys to NASA to present your project, right? And some, a few selected ones will receive a stipend of $600, right? That depends on how good your project is, right? So we try to make it competitive. So if you're interested, the class is on Friday, so we'll start tomorrow, right? It's a four hour long class. If you can't make it, or you know, maybe it's too many units or whatever, but you still want to participate, stop by, right? You don't have to be enrolled in the class to participate on the program, right? We're just trying to combine the two. Um, if you want to be in the class and receive credit for it, um, then we have to overwrite a, a, a 3B prerequisite, I think it is, right? So a physics 3B prerequisite, but we can do that with just the signature, okay? Um, so yeah, that's it. So you're interested in that program, Come by tomorrow. I think it's at two. I forgot the room. Two something, or maybe one something. It's one of the MSTC buildings. Um, um, but yeah, if you're interested. Okay. Anybody else have anything else? Anybody? Going once, twice. Meetings officially adjourned. Enjoy another sandwich, guys. <laughs>